Hi, this is Chris Hendren at Oceanside Photo and Telescope. Today we're going to be covering taking a stacked image that's been pre-processed and calibrated and doing wide field gradient corrections. We're going to be using an image taken through a Canon DSLR that's been aligned and stacked. Pre-processing has already been done in this case and we're going to be taking the image and running filters on it in Photoshop in order to make the image better in quality. All right, we have our image loaded here. This was taken with the Canon DSLR and a wide angle lens. It was aligned and stacked in Nebulosity 4. And as you can see, there are black bars at the top and sides and bottom. And this is a result of not having perfect tracking. When I align the stars, not every frame lined up and it left little gaps here along the edges. So in order to get an accurate brightness level for the entire image, you want to cut out those parts. If you look at the histogram, there's this little black area here at the left edge. That actually is the darkest areas of the image and it's giving a false reading because it's including information that's not useful. So the first thing you do is just drag a rectangle that excludes that area. You go up to image and crop like so. This has removed the black bars at the top, bottom, and right side. This gets rid of this area to the left side of the histogram, which is bad information, and shows you what you're really seeing. At this point, we want to do a large scale adjustment of values, because as you see in the histogram, there's a lot of area of the image that's not used. This is the values of all the pixels in the image, and they all lie somewhere near the middle part. So what we want to do first is take our black point and drag it up to the right, which as you see starts making our image very dark. So drag it up someplace reasonable, say about 50 here. You don't want to go all the way to the start of the histogram because you'll actually be throwing away information that could be useful. You want to leave a little bit of a gap here in this first step. So we hit OK. As you can see, the histogram has changed to the left and the image looks a lot darker than it was before. The next thing we want to do is adjust curves. Now this we're doing kind of the opposite. We want to brighten the brighter areas of the image like so without causing them to clip. We don't want to go too bright here otherwise we're going to lose color information in our stars. And we can adjust tones here. Now for such a broad part of the Milky Way the first thing you notice that actually is a lot of color bias here. The colors don't exactly line up. There's more red than there is blue or green. So the next step we do in adjustments, you go back to levels again, but we want to try to get the three color channels, as you can see, red, green, and blue, to all line up as close as possible. If you have the histogram open over here in the top right corner, you can then adjust in real time and see how your changes work. So we have too much red. You can then adjust the gamma here, which brings it down. And that lines it up a little bit better. The whole idea is to get all the peaks to line up roughly. And then if we go to blue, we notice that everything's pushed too far this way. So we want to increase that slightly. Again, we're not doing anything perfect here. We just want to get a general color adjustment. So we hit OK there. As long as you don't go too far to either end, anything you do here is recoverable. One quick action you can use to test your colors, click Auto Color and see what it does. If it doesn't change the balance very much, then you know you were pretty close to correct color. But doing Auto Color can actually cut too much information in the dark part. One quick trick, you go to Edit, Fade Auto Color, 
and then fade it to color. And what that does is it adjusts the color of the image but doesn't adjust the brightness level. So now we have a very well corrected image for color. We still have a problem though. We have these gradients caused by light pollution down at the bottom. And we see how some parts of the image have darker blacks than others. One quick and easy way to do that, use the lasso tool up here and do something that you can do in Photoshop that you can't do in many other photo editing tools. You can do adjustments on just part of the image. I can look at this and say this part of the image is darker than it should be. Once I've lassoed that area, I can adjust brightness. I can go to levels and curves and do the same thing, but there's a problem. I get a very jarring difference if I adjust brightness this way. Everything on one side of the line is one value and everything on the other is a different value. So what we want to do is to make that transition gradual. So you go to select, we want to modify and feather. And you want to set a pretty broad feather. I like using 500 pixels because it's a very gradual transition. That way, if I go and adjust the levels again, everything happens gradually. So we can quite easily make an adjustment. I usually don't like to make very large adjustments, maybe 1.06. And you'll have to use your own eye for some of these corrections because what I might say is this part is too dark, but this part is actually too bright on the underside of the Milky Way. Remember, as soon as you apply tools in Photoshop, to a certain extent, your artistic eye is the judge. It can't really be considered scientific information anymore. So don't stress about changing the color balance or always having correct colors. Same methodology. Use the lasso tool here to select an area. Go to select, modify, feather, and give it a nice blurred transition. At this point, I can go to Levels and actually move the other direction. I can actually darken the image down some. And that allows me to correct for different color aberrations I see in the image, as well as balancing out the areas that are too bright versus too dark. It's a repetitive process, done small steps at a time, and in the end, the person who needs to be happy with what you do is you, the imager. So don't be afraid to make a jump. You can always bring up the history window. And if you don't like what you did, you can go back. So don't be afraid to try things. Just make sure to not save images until you're happy with the results. At this point, I've gotten something that looks pretty good for gradients. Uh, further refinement could be done, but at this point, I'm going to do an adjustment in the star saturation and vibrance to push that up a little bit, as sometimes stars can be washed out after processing and stacking, especially low in the sky, like the southern part of the Milky Way is from northern latitudes. One adjustment you can do as well is a further curves adjustment. Now that we've adjusted for color a little bit, we can bring out information in a little more contrasty fashion. And that can help reveal gradients that are still not quite corrected. So I'll make one further adjustment here. Don't be afraid if the shape of things changes, it's still affecting pixels, 500 pixels on either side of this line. So as I go to levels and drop it slightly, it is affecting pixels outside of the line as you can see. Lastly, we're going to use one of my favorite filters for bringing out contrast. You go to filter, drop down to other, and high pass. And what this does is allows you to target information in different ways. The parts that you're seeing through the filter are the parts of the image that are going to be affected contrast wise. So I usually like to do a setting of about 150, give or take. And here's where the magic happens. You go to edit, 
fade high pass, but the blend mode you want to use is called soft light. If you adjust that, well, it looks pretty extreme, but here's the difference. That's what you started with. That's what you wind up with. So it might be a little too strong in this case. So what I like to do is fade any filter I'm doing here to 50%. The general rule to have an image look good is to make slight changes over time. The beauty of the high pass filter is we can run it again at a smaller radius in order to target some of this detail in the Milky Way that wasn't affected by the first filter. Same operation, fade high pass, blend mode, soft light, and fade to 50%. Again, this is some pretty major change to the image done in just a couple steps. So to recap, I'm going to go back to what we had here. We now run a single high pass run and a second high pass run. And you can see that the detail in the image here has a lot more contrast and clarity. Well, that's it for today. As with anything, final processing is based on your goal as an imager, so don't be afraid to adjust filters to your particular tastes. More or less saturation, more iterations of high pass, or more iterations of gradient correction. It's all up to you. Get out there and start shooting. And once again, from all of us here at Oceanside Photo and Telescope, keep looking up. Hey, this is Steven Hendren from Oceanside Photo and Telescope. Hope you found this video both fun and informative. What you just watched was actually part three of a three-part series. So if you haven't seen the other two parts, we highly suggest that you do. You can view those by clicking on either of the links you see on the screen right now. Be sure to keep an eye on this channel by subscribing. Don't be afraid to give a like, comment, and share this video with all of your friends. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day. Thank you.